cover your hair with a wig or to wear with a baseball, baseball cap with your hair sticking out in the back? To wear a wig or to wear a baseball cap? With your hair sticking out in the back, which is more preferable. Wait, so wearing a wig or, 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 or wearing a hat? Covering your hair with the a wig? hair is sticking out? Right. Why can't they just cover the hair? No, they want to know which is which is which is the right, which is the better way. Right? Well, listen, um, there's two mitzvot. One mitzvah is modesty, and one mitzvah is covering your hair. Now, covering your hair comes from the Torah Parashat Naso. We learn from the Sota that every Jewish woman that's married, and according to the Rambam, every Jewish woman, period even at the age of six years old, must cover our hair. Now, halacha is, we don't go by the Rambam on this one, only if she's married. But some Yemenites and some other uh, Jews that are close to the Masoret of the, uh, the, the uh, cl- go by the Rambam, they cover their kids' hair. I have a, uh, someone that I know, he has kids. He's not a uh, Yemenite. But his kids, he literally has six, seven, eight, nine-year-old girls, they all cover their hair. He lives in America. This is not common. Alachai is, if you're married, you have to cover your hair. So covering your hair is one mitzvah. Second mitzvah is modesty. Now, throughout the last 2,000 years, the sages have been against wigs completely, even though 100 years ago, 150 years ago, it was very, very noticeable if a woman wore a wig. It was very easy to know if she wore a wig because the wigs of those days, 150 years ago, 200 years ago, they looked more like the hair of a broom that we have today. So it was obvious to tell that it was a wig. But still, they were against it. How much against it? The Khatam Sofer, one of the Gdolei Olam, one of the Malachi Hashem that lived among people, among us, one of the greatest poskim in history. He was against the wigs. There was a woman in this community that decided that she's going to wear a broomstick on her head, a wig. We're not talking about the wigs of today that that look better than regular hair. We're talking about putting a leafa on your head. He said, he sent somebody to to her house. The Khatam Sofer says, take off the wig, put a mitpachat. Put a mitpachat. This woman was akshanit. She was stubborn, stubborn Jew. She didn't want to do it. A few weeks later, she died. Few weeks later, she died. It's not finished. Not the story. They took the body. They were carrying the body. The whole community. In those days, someone died. It was a big deal. The whole community is having the funeral. They're taking the body to the community, and they pass by the Khatam Sofer's house. Khatam Sofer was waiting outside. He told him to stop. He told him to stop. Uncover the uh, face of the woman. I'm going to cover the face. He spit on her. He says, that's what you get for going against Chazal. That's what you get going against the Torah. Chatam Sofer. Chatam Sofer. That was afraid to hurt a fly. Hey, you afraid to a fly? You went against the Chachamim? Chatam Sofer. We're not talking about a, a uh, Yeron Uven. Chatam Sofer. No one disagrees with the Chatam Sofer. Shkenazi, Sfaradi, Latay, whatever you are. Takes away, he spits on her face. Why? That's what you get for going against the sages. Over 126 poskim throughout all of history have been against the wigs completely, even when they look like broomsticks. The Gaon Mivilna, uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, the, the Yavits, giants, giants, giants. We're not even talking about just this generation, Sfaradi Ashkenazi. Giants were against the wigs when they looked like brooms. When they look like something that uh, it was embarrassing. But still, nonetheless, there was a debate because there was one Chacham 400 years ago that confused the public. And unfortunately, since then, the issue of wigs has become more and more of a problem over the years. But still, the handful of Poskim that said that wigs are allowed never said that the wigs of today are allowed. All of them said that what, if it's allowed, it's the wigs of a hundred years ago are allowed. The ones that look like brooms. Not the ones that look better than your hair. So there's not a single posek in the world today that will tell you that the wigs of today are allowed. 
But yet you see millions, millions of women, sometimes even if they're not religious, wearing wigs. So that's an issue with wigs, but there's a bigger issue. Why do they have a problem with them? Because they're not modest. So the mitzvah of modesty, if you're wearing a wig, it's very hard to fulfill that mitzvah of modesty. You cover your head, but it's very hard to fulfill your modesty uh, uh, requirement when that wig is longer than the exile. When you look like you just came off of a runway. When your hair always looks good, even though you just came out of bed. It doesn't make any sense that people think this is allowed. But still, they're going to say, the Lubavitcher Rebbe, they're going to mention all types of Gdolim's name and misinterpret some stuff they say. But that's not enough. There is another issue that came to our attention over the last four or five years that we brought to light again because it was ignored 14 years ago when Rav El Yashiv brought it to everyone's attention, which is that since wigs have become a multi-billion dollar industry, that means that all of the criminals that care less about Torah are going to want to put their hands into this business. We're talking about big business. We're talking about a woman that even if she doesn't own a house, she'll spend $3,000 on a wig, $4,000 on a wig. Women tell me, oh, here's a, okay, I'm going to put me tpachet on. What should I do with my wigs? I said, burn them. Because when you burn them, it's $15,000. Got three, four wigs, got $15,000 worth of wigs. I said, how many houses do you own? She goes, I don't even own a house, I rent. How do you allow yourself to spend $15,000 on wigs? Because what do you mean? I, I wore it every day. People have no sense of, of, of like, there's like simply no yetzeratov when it comes to wigs. Just yetzerah. So now, the problem is, why is why do people burn it? You see some of my videos on my channel with women, tzadikot, burning their wigs. Why? Because we discovered that since it's become such a big business, the only place in the world that could supply the market, the multi-billion dollar market, with an unlimited supply, of wigs is India that's the only place even though there is some hair that comes from different countries randomly it's not even 1% of the market 99% of the hair that's actually in wigs today real hair wigs today comes from India why India because India has over 80,000 cults and religions and one of the common things that they have over there is they have temples where the people travel to those temples from all over the country and all over the world actually almost 30 million people 30 million people travel to these temples every single year from all around the world to donate their hair to the idols because that's their mitzvah that's their idolatry that's their sacrifice to the idol they donate their hair because their idol spent a lot of money on a wedding and he still and he took a loan from the gods and the only way you can return it is if you donate your hair to him and he can sell it this is actually what they believe I know it's funny but this is actually what they believe or another one has a different idol that he had a rock fall on his head and gave him a bold spot so since then people donate their hair to this fake God that's their religion every woman that wears a wig for me real hair there's a 99.9 percent chance that your hair was a sacrifice to an idol which means the Torah says you're not allowed to sell it, you're not allowed to wear it, you're not even allowed to enjoy it in any way. The only mitzvah you have with something that came from idolatry is to destroy it. Which means that there are many b'not Israel that overall righteous, keep Shabbat, tarat mishpacha, modesty, good women, everything, even the wig is short. But the wig is real hair, she has idol worship on her head. And she doesn't understand why she has so many tzarot in her life, the kids, the husband, and this and that. She doesn't realize she's bringing it on herself. Now, unfortunately, you're going to have the vast majority of rabbis say exactly the opposite of what I just said. What's the difference? I did the research, they did it. We have a paper of over 200 pages verifying every single thing I said. We have people that live in India right now. Right now. Hindus. I don't know about Jews. Hindus. Hindus that live over there in India tell you everything that I just said is an understatement. I'm complimenting it, what I'm saying. It's much worse. It's much worse than what I say. I have videos of this. I have testimony of this. All types of things. But sometimes, unfortunately, the Yetzirah is very strong.
This is the hair received from temple, this time. So each and every unit they are segregated and uh, do it for tangle free. temple which is getting the hair free from the ladies they spend the money for a lot of charity work they give poor people feeding they run universities they run hospitals now imagine the temple there if there is no market for this they have to throw it ces cheveux ils viennent d'Inde c'est la meilleure qualité de cheveux qu'on puisse trouver aujourd'hui en extension Étant donné que je considère que les indiennes ont les plus beaux cheveux du monde, voilà, maintenant j'ai mon petit côté indien. Which means, back to your question, should a woman cover her hair with a wig or should she cover it with a hat that shows her hair? Well, if you cover it with a hat, you're not fulfilling any mitzvah pretty much. Why? Because you're not really fulfilling the mitzvah of covering your hair, because part of your hair, too much of your hair, more than three fingerfuls of your hair are shown, so it's in essence, you're not fulfilling the mitzvah right. You, you know, it's like a half a mitzvah. So there's no such thing as a half a mitzvah. It's either you do it or you don't do it. And you're, uh, and obviously it's not modest. It's not modest. So you're not fulfilling anything. It's almost like you're walking around with uh, nothing. On the other hand, if you put a wig on, if it's not a short wig, which so that means it's not a modest wig anyway, so you're not fulfilling the mitzvah of modesty, you are covering your head though, you are fulfilling a mitzvah, but what's the price of this mitzvah? Benefiting from idol worship. Benefiting from idol worship, if it's real hair wig. So if anyone wants a leniency because they're like a, uh, addicted to wigs, I will never tell you it's allowed. But if there was a choice between a wig from real hair and a synthetic wig, the synthetic wig is, is of lesser evil. Because we did some scientific studies, and about 2 to 3% of the, the uh, synthetic wigs have real hair in them. Because real hair is so uh, cheap that you could actually uh, fill the wigs, the synthetic wigs, with real hair, which means that it also has idolatry in it. But nonetheless, sometimes it doesn't. You could have a safek of some kind. Point being, it would still not be allowed, but nonetheless, it's much less worse, if you will, uh, than the real hair wigs. The real hair wigs, it's virtually impossible to get a real hair wig that is kosher, even if it has a kosher stamp on it. By the way, what's one of the best signs that any smart Jew could know for sure that the entire kosher industry of wigs is one big fraud? One sign for sure that all of you are smart. All of you right now, without looking into the kosher industry, all of you are going to know right now with a 100% conclusion is something going on with the kosher industry of wigs. Now, you ever went to the supermarket? Raise your hand if you went to the supermarket before. Went to the supermarket. You bought some kosher food? Raise your hand if you bought kosher food. Now, once in a while, you saw a U? Saw a U? Yeah. You see a K? You see a star K? You see a UD? You see all types of symbols. What does that mean? There are different kosher bodies. There are literally hundreds of kosher bodies for food. Hundreds. Why? It's big business. A lot of money in it. Wigs is also big business. Lots of money in it. How many kosher institutions supervise the entire wig industry? Multi-billion dollar industry. We're talking about millions of wigs. How many kosher bodies supervise the entire kosher industry? One. One company. One company. One company run by a guy named Rabbi Gross is the supervisor of the entire wig industry. 
There is nobody else. Now, if that's not fishy to you, if that makes sense to you, that there's one kosher company that's not even the size of, 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 of your local deli, they could supervise the entire industry, that sounds normal to you. That sounds kosher to you. There's something not kosher about you. You're missing a few brain cells. This alone shows there's something unkosher about the kosher industry in the wig industry. Why? Why doesn't anybody else want to jump in? So much money in it. You could go in there right now. Right now there's a monopoly. You go in, you have no competition. What, you have one guy. You have half the industry within a year. Who is he going to compete with? Half the industry within a year. You make millions of dollars. You're printing money. How come nobody goes into it? Because anyone with one ounce of Yirat Shamaim runs away from that industry like it's the plague. Like it's the Malach HaMavet himself. Why? Because there's no way to kosher a wig. No way. Why? Because you know it came from India. You know you cannot follow the hair from the time it was uh, uh, taken off the head until the time it's put on the head. That means that even if you saw that one of the people didn't donate to the idol, she sold it in Russia, she sold it in Bangladesh, she sold it in Gainom, she sold it somewhere else, no problem. That hair is not going to be a wig though. That woman's hair is not going to be a wig. It's going to be part of a wig. Average wig is three heads. Average wig is three different women's heads. Why? Because imagine, the hair of a wig is not like the hair of a regular person. Everything is even. Everything is perfect. No woman in the world has even hair. You have split ends. You have hair like this, hair like this, hair like this. All types of things. The wig, everything's perfect. All the time. Why? Because it's... They make it that way, manufacture it that way. They put all the hair in one giant place and they mix it all up. You can get it in blonde, you get it in blue, red, green, burgundy. You can have anything you want. So this Rabotai is the truth about wigs. So that means that even if you're fulfilling the mitzvah of covering your head, if you will, better than what you did with the hat, with the hair coming out, the cost of it is benefiting out of idolatry, which is much, much worse. Much worse. So that means that you have to overcome the obstacle, the etzara, put a snoot on, put a mitpachat on, put a hat on, but just put all your hair in it. And be proud to be a Jew, for heaven's sake. Why? Do you want the Mashiach to show up and you have your hat on with your hair coming out? Oh, no, 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 I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. I didn't mean Mashiach. Let me put my hair back. What do you think? It's going to help you? Mashiach shows up. She's going to put her hair back in there. All the women that are not covering their hair, they're going to come into the house. All of a sudden, they're coming out with mitpachat. You think that's going to save you? It's too late. It's too late at that point. If you didn't do tshuva before Mashiach comes, nothing's going to help you. If you're not covering your hair right now, you're not modest right now, start. ASAP. ASAP. Don't waste a minute. Whether you want to, you don't want to, doesn't make a difference. Do it. Why? It's for you. Only one that benefits out of it is you. Don't make a Kadosh Baruch Hu wait for you to do tshuva for 3,000 years. 3,000 years is waiting for you to do tshuva and he cannot save you. Why? Because you don't want to put a mitpachat on. Because you don't want to keep your breath in your pants. Because you don't want to watch your eyes. Because you don't want to, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, keep Shabbat. He's waiting for you for 3,000 years, for heaven's sake. Have some mercy on him. 3,000 years reincarnating you, giving you another chance, giving you another chance. More panasa, more miracles, more refuah lima, more kids, more wife, more good times. He's waiting for you for finally, finally you're going to do tshuva. Don't make him wait for 3,000 years and you still didn't do tshuva. You still want to eat the burger. Don't make him wait for nothing. He's waiting for you. Do it already. Do yourself a service. What joy are you going to get out of it? Not covering your hair or not watching your bleat or not watching how you do business and so on. What, what are you going to get out of it at the end? You're going to be miserable anyway. Without Hashem, you cannot be happy. It's impossible to be happy without a Kadosh Baruch Hu.